Okay, welcome back, everyone. We're here live in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. And we're here at the Amazon Summit, where all the action's happening. Amazon's rolling out there. Their little little road show. They do this on top of reInvent, their big mega show, which is where all the action happens in terms of big announcements. But this is about Amazon. They've been doing this since the, I remember Amazon started with startups. They roll in, they talk in small groups. Really about learning. It's a learning day. They're really presenting their stuff. They're opening up the, under the hood. They're showing the developers and the customers what they got, where they're going, announcing some key enterprise uh, flavored kind of deals with Infor. Just, you're just seeing Amazon open up the broad based portfolio of their customer base and the feature rich cloud that they've been building. Uh, pedal to the metal is the theme that I see happening here. More features, they're announcing everything in, in, uh, under the sun here. I mean, the kitchen sink is coming out. Um, and our next guest is uh, Joey Parsons, who's the head of operations of a really cool startup in Palo Alto, California, my hometown, uh, called Flipboard. And my co-host is Jeff Frick here. I was looking at on the queue. But Joey, welcome to the queue. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to be here. So Flipboard is a well, uh, well-established startup, firstly known for its mega funding. Um, got some big-time backers, Kleiner Perkins, uh, experienced entrepreneurs. So known for big funding. Really, which is, which kind of got everyone's attention, but the reality is, is that it's a really good app. A lot of people are using it. Uh, the idea of using social media, reading stuff on the web, the magazine of the future is going to be virtual, um, and consumption of content is a big part of that. So, um, when you guys built a business from scratch, um, we're doing some similar work with CrowdChat, so we kind of know the Amazon story. But, but obviously, you know. State the obvious. I mean, for us, it's pretty obvious. But like the folks out there looking at the relevance of Amazon, how you guys got into building a business on top of Amazon, and what you continue to innovate on, give them a, give them a view of what that is all about. Yeah, I think it's really important uh, when, when you're initially kind of building a business, as we were at Flipboard, to kind of choose a platform that can grow quickly with you and, and, and scale to, to scale to the you know what you hope your app to be. So when we launched our initial iPad ad four years ago, we knew that we needed a platform that was going to be able to scale with us. And at that time, you know, building tooling around scaling out a platform was, was all AWS and still is. So uh, it, it really made sense with us to go with a platform where we'd be able to try a lot of things, uh, like like Andy mentioned in the keynote, companies that are like failing fast and, and being able to experiment a lot. We have a real, real great opportunity to do that within Amazon, and that's what we did with Flipboard initially. So talk about what you guys use with Amazon and what you guys built in-house on your own. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Obviously, we, we were heavy users of EC2. Uh, we're, we're in the thousands of instances there. Uh, we, we use CloudFront pretty heavily to serve out our static content. Uh, like our proprietary paginated content is served directly out of CloudFront. Um, and in, in terms of like build versus buy decisions, we, we actually use RDS for MySQL. We're, we're leveraging a lot of like the, uh, the, the work that they've done there to make that a really seamless experience for us so that we can really focus on scaling out other pieces of our service as opposed to scaling out MySQL. So, uh, and, and we continue to have, you know, as, as Amazon continues to release new products, we, we continue to have kind of like that build versus buy discussion around should we go with like the Amazon provided solution versus rolling with our own. In, in some cases, we've predated Amazon in a lot of ways where uh, we started using Memcache before Elasticache existed. So it's one of the reasons why we, we've chosen to continue on with Memcache because, you know, the, the, Changing it midstream isn't always the best idea, but we always continue to evaluate from both a performance and a cost perspective on what it would take to switch over and uh, make those decisions accordingly. As you guys build more legacy into your application, as you guys as you can stay you know more alive longer and roll out more users, you kind of have to build up these practices. So can you talk about the areas that around scale, in particular auto scaling? Amazon's got some pretty interesting auto scaling. They got some elastic. Cache, and you mentioned Memcache, uh, and, and the, the promise of DevOps really is about version control, pushing code, infrastructure as code, as we always say here on theCUBE. So what's baked and what's not baked from your perspective? I know Amazon's got some great stuff, but some of this stuff's pretty, is, is pretty bleeding edge, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys have to balance, from an ops standpoint, tapping into the bleeding edge stuff, but also making sure that it's operationally sound. But what are those areas that you guys look at that are bleeding edge, that are relevant, that you guys are kicking the tires on? I, I think I think definitely on, on the bleeding edge side, uh, we, we, we're taking a, a good look at Kinesis. I think from a from a from a real time stream processing standpoint, it makes a lot of sense to uh, for Amazon to build that as part of their platform. And we use some open source tools like Kafka and, and Storm to accomplish that currently. So continuing to look at that and see if that makes sense for us to switch over to. Uh, but but that's also a significant piece of our platform, and we want to make sure that if we do make the switch, that it'll go well. Uh, and also things like DynamoDB, you know, we, we make heavy heavy use of actually HBase uh, and, and a key value store there. 
And what, we, what we're looking for is you know something that could potentially replace that, but maybe not, right? So we'll continue to evaluate. Yeah, I know DV is a pretty good replacement for race race. Yeah, we'll continue to evaluate and test <laughs> it, and 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 and, and see, where, see where things end up. But ultimately, it has to end up in a better experience for our readers and, and a faster faster experience there. And ultimately, that's what we're looking for the most. So we'll get that on the we'll get down the record. So um, I know the geeks that are on crowdchat.net uh, slash AWS Summit. Bring up that question: H base versus DynamoDB. I know we ported on, so on the live stream, I want to see some commentary on that from all the H base database geeks. So, sorry, Jeff. Yeah. So, Joe, talk a little bit about uh, how much of the platform did you guys have initially that you built, or did you start it on Amazon? And what's this this constant trade off between your own and the uh, and using the AWS services? So we've actually been on AWS from day one. Okay. Like, uh, we, we've never used any other platform for for serving out our magazine content or reader content out there. So, with, with, with that being said, you know we, we, we don't envision a future without Amazon. I think the, the flexibility that it gives us to be able to, to to try new experience, scale quickly, you know, our, our and, and, and kind of meet the needs of how our reader activity goes throughout the day. Amazon makes a lot of sense for us to be able to, to continue down that path. So, talk a little bit about how you're using the cloud and big data and, and the ability to do A/B testing. To, to really develop your applications and, and move your product forward. Yeah, so uh, we, we've actually built our own like in, internal A/B testing tool, but um, in, in terms of in terms of like A/B testing from like an infrastructure standpoint, whenever like a new instance gets released, we'll actually deploy that with one of our production service roles with a portion of like uh, production traffic going to it. And if it holds up and does well, we'll actually switch over immediately on the infrastructure side to use to use that actual new instance type. And actually, during during the keynote when they when they mentioned the new like R3 instances and uh, and actually the price drops for like C3s and M3s, that really changes like the economics of some of the stuff that we're doing. And I'm excited like to actually go back and try to you know see how this changes things. So, which which leads us into another question: the, the typical knock on kind of using an AWS service yeah. as you grow is yeah, it makes a lot of sense when you're small, but at some point in time. Buying is more economical than renting. I, I, th I think there's there's definitely some people that have followed that path, but there's also a whole host of other of other startups and other enterprise companies that are huge that are continuing to stay on AWS. So I, I think it's a it, it's, it's a bet that you make and, and a calculated bet, but there's lots of uh, there's lots of history there in terms of companies that have stayed with the cloud and been able to be successful with it, and that's what we're trying to do with Flipboard. Right. Yeah, Adrian Cockroft, the Cube alumni from Netflix, is kind of the poster so child. So talk about the media now. bubble right now. Let's, let's just, we love to talk about the media bubble because we're a media company. We're 20 uh, full-time employees now, self-funded from scratch. Still not on the Flipboard app, so I uh, want to make sure you guys put us in the uh, <laughs> the uh, Flipboard app. We're number one in enterprise tech. I don't know why you guys don't have us in there, but but I want to get that plug in. The, uh, the media bubble is about how the consumption's changing. So, you know, outside of the overfunding, you guys are heavily funded. And it's not necessarily a bubble on your end. You get some good backers. They believe in the vision. Um, but the reality is consumption is not just about media magazines. It's a user experience change. And what you're seeing on the web with social, social, social media, for instance, it's a consumption issue, right? So you're seeing the media companies becoming large enterprises because they have to serve up the infrastructure at scale to do some of this consumption issue. So like it's, it's a lot like, you guys have to build your own Google in a way. Like you have a lot of content, you're storing it. So as a, as a media company, there's a lot of bubble growth there, but how does that make you guys think like an enterprise? Can you be specific around some of the operational things you guys do that makes you think about 100% uptime time and some of these enterprise features? Yeah, I, th I think you know, for, from, from an operational standpoint, our, our, our most important thing is, is for, for our readers to have a fast, beautiful, like always available experience, right? You know, and, and, and shooting for the uh, shooting for 100% uptime is, is a personal goal of mine on the operations team to ensure that nobody has a bad reader experience. So, in, in thinking a little bit more like an enterprise with like five nines and things like that, you know, we, we definitely we definitely strive to meet kind of like a, the same expectations that people have from you know from from their 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 core like life the core like life tools and apps that they use. We want Flipboard to be one of those. And and and, we'll, and, and, and want to make sure that we provide the uptime to be able to, to deliver. Right, so let, me, let me ask you a different question then. Yeah. So some people will say, "Oh, Flipboard, it's a piece of cake." My kid, he runs the ice cream machine at the freaking local store. He could build that app in a, in a second. Spin up Amazon and create uh, a Flipboard competitor. Piece of cake, trivial. Okay, that's what someone might say. They look at like these these apps on on the iPhone. Get it yeah. on the iPhone. 
Talk about how hard it is to do what you guys are doing operationally. I mean, we know, we have some insight into your business, um, but it's not trivial. Talk about some of the challenges that have gone into the engineering of Flipboard and how you guys have maintained that agile and what you guys have done technically. Yeah, I, I, I definitely, I definitely think on the uh, on the scale side, as as I mentioned in the keynote, that uh, we, we have two big systems. We have like our inter real time interactive systems that serve up like real time content to to our millions of readers, and we also have um, we also have like our data importing platform that's that's going out to um, that's going out to like our publisher contents, RSS feeds, and like real time streams of like social activity. So if you think about it, if, if, if you're looking at something that came in from your social network that you recently liked there, and you open it up in Flipboard, you'll see it right there that you actually liked it. Being able to have that kind of ability to be able to, to show like your, your recent engagement is, is actually a, a pretty tough problem to solve if you look at the scale of how many users we have and how many people are actually using the system. So, a lot of I.O. too, a lot of I.O. De de definitely a lot of I.O. Uh, you're building up data stores and being able to retrieve information randomly. Do you use a lot of Node.js on that stuff? Or? Uh, our, our actually, our, our web front end is actually written in Node.js. But um, obviously, the, the other clients are, are written in their native, their native languages on Android and iOS. All right, so let me ask the hard question, which is, if you didn't have Amazon, what would your staff look like? Give me just to paint a picture of, maybe you're not old like me, but I actually remember the stack and rack and servers that really kind of sucks, but what would their life be like, just staff-wise? Just what would be the picture I, I, Amazon? I, 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 think, I think it would be, uh, we'd easily be past 15 people. Just e to manage e the Easily gear. fast, yeah, yeah. From, from people managing the network, so like the like the racking and stacking, like you mentioned, and even people that are like dealing with buying stuff, like the procurement and stuff of stuff, and, and dealing with like the provisioning and shipping and, and, and getting it into your cage and dealing with those relationships with all the different providers that you have to deal with, easily at 15, and we've been able to do it with just three. So scaling to 100 million readers with just a full-time off staff of just three people. By the way, we're not going to hold you as a guesstimation, <laughs> so it's about 15. Yeah. Maybe it like it's probably, probably around maybe like 5x, probably 5x. <laughs> maybe it, it, it could be larger. If you, yeah. if you think about you know, using different availability zones in different regions yeah. and having to have staff in each one of those regions to be able to service that, it's, it's a pretty tough thing. And Joey's a mild-mannered guy, and he's friendly and smiling, but if you look at his LinkedIn page, John, I don't know if you check it and do any of your research, but they're right at the top, nothing short of kicking ass is acceptable. So this is not a trivial pursuit to do Flipboard. It's not a trivial pursuit to start a uh, media startup, so yeah, you know, be careful, right? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> He's not gonna gonna be uh, gonna be a pushover. Yeah. Okay, Joey Parsons, thanks for coming on the cube. Flipboard, guys, check out Flipboard if you don't already know about it. Most people do know about it. It's a really hot app. Uh, one of, it was really one of the first apps that came out that was really focused in on the elegance of the of the beauty of the product, which is what I always was attracted to. Obviously, local local hometown favorite, Palo Alto. Um, this is the cube. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're live in San Francisco at the Amazon Summit, Amazon Web Services Summit here in San Francisco. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest.